Yes, indeed, folks. You're listening to Blue Please here on CynicalBrit.com with myself, Tom Biscuit. Arr. So, I do have some Cataclysm Q&A, although I would like to briefly cover the topic of Guild Limits. So, a few days back, Blizzard announced that Guild Limits would be set at 600 for Cataclysm. They then changed it based on, I don't know, popular demand, maybe? Or whatever the case. They then changed it to 1,000. Now, the justification was, well, it would make achievements pointless because you'd have too many people. It would be really easy. And it's so silly an argument, isn't it? Because they can very easily fix it. You don't know how they can fix it? Oh, well, I can think of a few things. One of which would, of course, be... Yes, indeed! The old limit! You remember where you only had the top 20 contributors in a guild? Or when you had contributors to the general achievements? No, they got rid of that. We don't want that anymore. And, oh, look, now suddenly it's really, really easy. There's a daily cap. We're well aware of that. But as regards to stuff like the critter killing achievements and stuff like that, there's no cap to the number of people that can do them. It's just stupid. They could easily have a much larger system. And oddly enough, they were talking about it. They were making some great excuses. Let me see if I can actually find the reason and rationale for this. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Yes, dear. 600. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Okay, right. They've reevaluated that. Okay, we need a better one than that. Let's have a look at the next one. I'm just looking at more champion to actually find this information because I want this quote because I like to call BS on this quote. There we go. Guild member cap and cataclysm. You hard cap of 600. This was the old one. Now they will tell you why. With the advent of the new guild system, we're tracking many more things on each individual player. In order to support that, we need to limit the amount of members to a reasonable level. Okay. So we need to limit the amount of members to a reasonable level. So, suddenly, what we're going to then do after that is we are going to raise the amount of people that we can track by 400. Just out of the blue. Arbitrarily raise it to 1,000. So, your excuse was, well, there's loads of things we need to track and the systems might get overloaded. But here's an additional 400. What? (laughs) Don't give me that, Blizzard. It's entirely arbitrary and you know it. Just give a proper reason. Now, I know that most guilds aren't that large, but some are. It's if there is a legitimate reason not to have guilds of that size, then okay. Now, then they revise their rationale for the 1,000. This is by Bashiok, and he says, This new guild cap is being enforced for several reasons, but they all fact... I love that. Several reasons. They all factor into the need to control guild size in light of new guild systems, including guild leveling and achievements. Okay, well, you already do it with guild leveling, because you have a daily cap, as I recall, and achievements, well, I'm sorry, a thousand is still a huge number when it comes to dealing with achievements. Come on. Really? Well, approximately 500 members were visible in the UI, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, guild leveling and cataclysm features unified progression powered by a series of complex systems to track the contributions of all guild members. Oh, I'm... Continue performance. He makes the excuse again. You can't say that. Seriously. I'm sure there is an impact on performance. But if there was such an impact on performance, why would you start with 600, then suddenly say, oh, 1,000? Yeah, because, well, my mental arithmetic is absolutely abysmal, sadly, as much as I would like to believe otherwise. But let's see. How many percent are we looking at right there? I'm going to have to get a calculator off. This is so embarrassing. I was never any good at maths. I was absolutely terrible at it. Yeah, 16. Let's design. Divide 400 by 60. Yeah, a lot. (laughs) You can figure it out for yourself. A little bit of a test for you. Whatever the case, 400. That that is almost 50% larger, which is crazy, isn't it? In fact, it's way more than 50%. I'm terrible at percentages. Oh, God, my face. Uh, You know what I mean. It's a huge amount of extra people. And the problem with the huge amount of extra people is that there's more load on the systems, right? But it just seems to me that 600 must have been uber conservative then. Either that or they've redesigned their system in the course of a day and a bit. Which doesn't seem all that likely, does it? 
I don't really know why they would do that. Whatever the case, I'm in support of large guilds. I'm going to be in one. Of course I'm in support of large guilds. Make a guild however large or small you so desire. I don't see the problem with it. I know one of the only large guilds of that size, probably Goon Squad on Malganus US, I believe. They're pretty large. They're over a thousand and art for a fact. Well, whatever the case. That's your limit, folks, and that's what we're going to be looking at. And Troll Face, we'll start off with a thousand. If we get more than that, we'll make a second guild. We'll spread things out. We'll do a head count, of course, before the expansion to see how many we get. Then we'll cut out maybe 20% of those because they probably won't come over anyway. And they were just making things up. Right. Let's go and have a look at some Q&A, shall we, folks? Okay. What will happen to our current emblems? Do they get turned into justice points? Yes. Do I know what the conversion rate is? No. <laughs> Actually, they, I believe they get turned to gold. Hang on, let's go find out, shall we? Google is amazing. This is one of the things that isn't actually in the beta yet, as far as I can tell. So, I couldn't tell you from experience. Convert to justice points. Google's amazing. It makes me look really, really smart. Currency conversion, justice point update. Here we go. But yes, you can convert emblems of triumph and frost, by the way. Version math update. There is a clap cap as well, by the way. Here we go. Okay, so here's what you're getting. Right, that's converting into gold. Aha. No. That doesn't make any sense. No, yeah, there we go. Your justice points total will be equal to Emblems of Triumph plus Emblems of Frost times by 11.58. And the soft cap for both Honor and Justice conversions is 4,000 points. So, yeah, you can actually get justice points. And the thing is, it's not going to get you very much, really. 4,000 justice points. Because if I recall correctly, you get about 75 for a normal five-man heroic boss kill. So, it's not a huge number. It's not bad, certainly. It's a nice little boost to kick you off, but... If you think about it, 4,000 over 75. 53 bosses killed. Eh, it's not all that many. Think about it when you actually get to level 85, just how many dungeons you're going to be running. Now, uh, you could earn that in a day, I think. Are there enough bosses? Probably not. Maybe almost in a day. Yeah, and justice points get you blues, by the way. So, yeah, there you go. You should be saving your triumph and your frost if you so desire. I personally do not really desire. I think I might already have the right number for it. And how many can you save total? Well, 4,000 divided by 11.58. You can save a total of 345 badges. That's your cap, so you, that's what you want to be shooting for right there. And I think I'll probably do that, honestly. We'll go and just face roll some heroics just so I can earn some stuff before the start of it. And we've got a nice little boost there. But yeah, hang on to them, certainly. On the basis of that. Okay. What else do we have? Q &A, Q &A. Mage player. Do you think that all three specs will be viable for raiding and cataclysm? Yeah. Arguably. Why? Well, I mean, the thing is, you're going to want frost anyway if you don't have any kind of other re mana regeneration, because that's quite handy. Fire is good for the 5% crit, but of course, bear in mind, all this is homogenized, and there's a 3% overall raid damage, which I think you can get from a Paladin or something as well. But, yeah, I think they are all viable for what I can tell anyway, and there is some nice synergy between the Fire and the Frost Trees. is isn't so much for Arcane, but it's still competitive. What do you think the most important skill for someone that started in Wrath will have to learn in order to succeed in Cataclysm? Huh. Well... Not falling asleep in a dungeon is probably a reasonable idea. Learn from your mistakes. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's not specific, because, I mean, there's stuff like CC, stuff like kiting skills that you might not have used in Wrath, but just focus. And don't fall asleep in the dungeon. Don't face roll. That's a skill, right? In your opinion, which class do you think has had the most changes, and do you think they are good changes or bad? And what about class at the opposite end of the spectrum? <sighs> God knows. I've heard that Warlocks have changed drastically, and obviously they have with the new Soul Shard system, so that's probably part of it. Paladins have changed quite a bit as well. I heard that some Paladin healers have really been complaining about a lot of things, Mana Drain in particular, so that might have changed for the worse at the moment, but they are working on it. 
But yeah, others, otherwise, definitely, in my opinion, the Cataclysm Warlocks are significantly changed. Okay. Right, this is interesting, because I never actually said this, but okay. In all your shows and videos, you say that Frost Majors suck, but in a recent Major video, you say that Frost has passed Arcane in a way. Why is this? Well, one, I didn't say it has passed Arcane in a way at all. <laughs> this is the problem that people who make up things and hear what isn't there. Frost is a viable raiding spec in Cataclysm, which, as of Wrath, it wasn't. So, it's as simple as that. What else do we have? Archaeology. Will the new profession archaeology be available to players who have not yet bought Cataclysm? I'm thinking no. Very unlikely. The only things they're making available for people that don't buy Cataclysm are the new zones. And by new, I mean the revamps of the old ones. They're going to be there. You're not going to see anything else like that. Will Azure Mist Isle be changed as far as I'm aware? No. It will not. Yes, I know, it is 6.66. Repeating, of course. That was the answer to it. Okay, what else do I have? Mm. Do you think Blizz should update the WoW holidays? I think it should stop wasting time with the WoW holidays in general. I think they're an absolutely pointless waste of time. They really are. Stupid festivals, I don't even bother with them. What's the point? There's no challenge to be had. It's running around doing errands. I don't like doing errands. I like playing games. Why do you like trolls? Why don't I like trolls? Because it's a three paragraph freaking question about why I like trolls. Please. Personal preferences apparently require detailed explanation. Okay, what else do we have? Have you noticed any noticeable difference in engineering so far? Perhaps a new use for that gunship jetpack? No, I haven't. A lot of the professions haven't been properly updated yet. It's worth having a look at MMO Champion, honestly. And since I'm not an engineer, I tend not to notice these things. Any news about Silvermoon, Isle of Quelldenas? Will it be advanced? Not that I've seen so far, but I think that it might. I would hope that it will be. Because even though it's technically a TBC zone, it's still in Azeroth. So it doesn't make any sense for it not to be affected by the Cataclysm. We shall see. I imagine it's quite low priority. Okay. I'll do one more, shall I? No, I'm aware. Is Arcane viable in raiding? I've already explained that it is. Let's look through them, see what else I can find. Now, I can't answer that. That's about Death Knights. I don't know anything about Death Knights. Zulfaric. Huh. That's odd. Because apparently, if you fly over Zulfaric now, there are dancing trolls there. They weren't the last time I flew over it, which is about a month ago. So, ha. Huh. Okay. It's not a question, but it's an interesting fact nonetheless. I'm going to have to go and have a look at that. And last by no means least, all right, any plans on going to DreamHack? Yes. The DreamHack at the end of the year I plan to be at. I believe that's at the end of November. If I can get there, then I will be at DreamHack. And obviously anyone that wants to meet up is by all means welcome. Oh, we're pretty much done, folks. We'll do some shout-outs to end off the show in the last few minutes. Send them over IRC, Twitter, or indeed over the email, themurloc at gmail.com. That is themurloc at gmail.com send them on over if you so desire that will be the way to do things I think and we'll do a few shout outs when we end the show anyway thanks a lot for listening to the show today guys very much appreciated I know that it's been rescheduled it's a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with but hey hopefully we are stable it looks like we are so I think that everything else should be absolutely fine going forward okay First things first, shout out to Optech, who is going to be helping me out with some Warlock guides for my channel. He is one of the first to sign up to do so. It's going to be pretty awesome. As to how we're going to do that, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> A shout out to Kojin, Ikil, Litreva, Boozy, and I like Big Buttons for the nostalgia trip a few nights ago with the glorious YouTube spam of old cartoon themes. That's from Ayomo. A shout out to Oblivion on Dathrimar. Fantastic rating with you guys. No more Qua to wipe us on trash. That's from Red Vengeance, I believe. Shout out to Swampy for knitting her way to victory. That's from Yakabun. A shout out to Dark Nova and Alex Strauss in US. I am not doing shouts in the channel. Send me a PM, you idiots. Good lord. See, I'm going to have to actually moderate this. I'm not doing shout outs in this channel. PM me, you nubs. There. Okay. 
Shout out to Cataclysm for being awesome. That's from Lincoln. A shout out to me for preserve. Preserving through the no, persevering through the old crappy one to sixty leveling content. That's from Achalus. A shout out to Tyler Johnston, just because. A shout out to the Syndicate. M oh God, <laughs> freaking Twitter just disappeared. Work, work better. Bend to my will. Shout out to Trollface the JB because it's going to be awesome. That's from Jesper Carlson. Shout out to the Sworn Enemy Guild on Agrimar who is struggling right now. That is from Cyberlike Vox. A shout out to the Syndicate mobs getting slaughtered on Lightning's Blade EU for my Ravenhold rep. That's from Grimel. A shout out to the Rawcast crew, even though that is now somewhat disappeared. Oh, you sent me a DM, how dare you? A shout out to the Rawcast crew, who set to cover all of BlizzCon, it's going to be a blast. That is from Stompalina. Shout out to Grey Raiders. And a shout out to Softcore Ten Man Raiding Guild on Kazakh EU. Nemetus Order for downing Syndragoza 25 as well. And a shout out to Modus Vivendi on Wormrest Accord US. That's from Sevelin. And a shout out to Baspian for not failing as a healer from Aces. Please don't hack my account with my email. Hack the Gibson, man! Ugh. Universally stupid. A shout out to Skull and Bones on Hellscream US, home of accidental awesomeness. Vote Veg 2012. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, no, DCC chat is dumb. Use PMs. Shout out to Wargan for being awesome. That's from Lucius North. Bloody furries. And a shout out to you for mentioning Egosoft last week. It's Poo Bar. By the way. Recommendation, you might have seen that new What is it? X Superbox on Steam. Don't buy the Superbox, just buy X3 Terran Conflict. That's all you need to buy, seriously. Just get X3 Terran Conflict. The rest of the games, you don't really need to buy them because X3 is just better than all of them. We're done, folks. Thank you ever so much for listening to the show right here on cynicalbrit.com. Those who won the contest, that being the poster contest, not the beta contest, you will need to contact me via PM on the forums to claim your prizes. And one last thing, I will be at the Stratlan this weekend, which means I won't do a show, but I will reschedule it. I will do the next show on Tuesday. It will be a Tuesday assault. That's the 19th of October. That will be when I'll do the next Blue Please show, because like I said, I am at a big LAN next weekend so I will not be available to do the show, and I will, of course, be stockpiling videos and stuff like that. So, yeah, Tuesday, and, of course, the podcast will be available as usual. Thank you for listening, folks. We can go out on something. The question is what? There are so many good tracks available. But you know what I haven't heard in ages? A little bit of machine head. Oh, yes. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's also not particularly bad to play something that's very well known from Machine Head because you know why it's well known? Because it's an excellent track. It goes by the name of Davidian, folks. Thank you for listening. Good night. <laughs>